Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining Prenatal Alliance today on our Sunday Live series. I am Susana Lopez. I'm your host for today, and I'm very happy to have with me Laura Aplinger. Laura is the Vice President of ANEP Brazil, the National Association for Prenatal Educa Education. And since the late 1970s, she has been a prominent of the powerful influence of a mother's inner life on the formation of her unborn baby. She often leads workshops and gives talks about prenatal parenting at conferences and webinars. And she's also the author with me and Francois Amingue of the book, Prenatal Pre Pregnancy Matters. Uh, and this book, Pregnancy Matters, you can download freely on our Prenatal Alliance website, which is prenatalalliance.org. Laura, thank you so much for joining us today on our Sunday Live series. It's such a pleasure to have you. And today we are going to talk about such an important matter, the key to a better world, talking about conscious conception, pregnancy, and birthing. So I'm going to, to tell you to take the lead on this conversation. Start wherever you want to start with, if it's with conscious conception, if it is straight to pregnancy. But tell us, what are the keys for a better world? Something that we so longer uh, want for so many generations. We are always trying to get better and better as long as we go. Yes. Hello, Susanna. It's a joy to be here in this second Sunday Live. Um, and what a theme. Um, in a way, Susanna, we are the bearers of good news. That human nature that is greedy, that is violent, this human nature that is so prone to addictions and abuse of power, it is not what defines us. We have much, a huge array of choices provide we are made in the womb of our mothers with a physiology that that loves life instead of being made out of suffering out of wanting or lacking we could be made all of us in humanity we could be made of of plenitude of fulfillment and this is great news i remember when michel Rodin says what are the obstetrician what are the basic needs of a woman in labor and then he describes everything that is absent in a hospital well we can take that backwards and say what are the basic needs um, for a couple who wants to conceive a child because those those needs um, should be addressed not just in our education at school but also in society in general, like in the arts, in our culture. And those basic needs are so simple. They, hmm, if we invest in infant structure, as Marcy Axner says, we have dividends, I mean, huge benefits later on. Because in the womb, and of course, starting with conception, a lot will be set, um, a lot will be already part of what will stay with us through life. How do you see that, Susanna? Yeah, yeah. I think it's wonderful what you're saying because one of the things that we that we find in our work at Prenatal Alliance is we are we are committed to give this information to youth. And when you're talking about not only in our own education, it's a stepping stone when we talk about how are we going to give this information to the youth? Because uh, most of us had already our children, but now we want to keep the information flow to the youngsters, the ones that are planning one day to become parents. And that's where conscious conception comes in, right? So yeah. what can what is the fundamental information for young people, for maybe couples that are thinking about having their babies. And what is this about conscious conception? Because yeah. usually we think about, you know, having a baby and try it out. But in a lot of cultures, it actually starts three months before, one year before, three years before. 
You want to talk about that? Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. And the, the more we study this theme, the more we even apply it, the more mysterious it becomes because it opens different perspectives and it's so grand, so huge. Every time I went to high schools in America and Argentina and even a little bit in Brazil, I'm always surprised these teenagers, they are interested in hearing this information, but they also want to know what, how they came. They, they look mm -hmm. upon their own story. How were their parents before they even were conceived? Were they conceived being wanted? I think this is one of the most crucial little points, you know, in the, in the Vedas, the sacred books in India, they say conception is the most important moment of our lives. So how not to prepare for that? So first thing is the couple to be open and want a child. Like you enlist for parenthood. I consider us, Susanna, all families like foster homes for souls, incoming souls from heaven that for some reason need a body to accomplish something on earth. So if I am a foster home, I can ask life to bring me insight and intuition because many couples will already have a good health. They can always improve the physical health. But what about our mental health? What about the love we have for each other if we are a couple? How do we live that couple? And do we know enough about our personal story? Mm -hmm. Do we know how we were conceived? Because, you know, life is a bunch of memories constantly interacting with each other. So if I conceive a child, or when I conceive a child, my conception is already pulsating in me, reawakened somehow, and all the phases of pregnancy. Did you sense something like that? You had three pregnancies. Yeah. Definitely. Oh. So one, one, not, not so much on my first pregnancy, because I think the first pregnancy was actually what, what opened me for the field of prenatal education. So it was, it was very important, the experience that, and a lot of moms, this happens, the experience that they have on their first pregnancy opens them to the world of, of sentient beings that babies are. Uh, as an experience in the womb with the connection that they have with their babies. One of the things that you so much like to talk about is that parents are, are this um, genetic engineers when, when we are talking about conscious pregnancy and also throughout pregnancy, the mother and the father. You want to talk a little bit about that? Because this yes. is so important. We are not just talking about the physical and the, the physical health that we are um, um, transmitting to the child, we are also talking about the emotional, the mental health. Yes. Right? And as we live an emotional state, a mental state that is our best as a couple, already we are being um, chemical engineers, genetic engineers on our own genetic material. We often speak about human reproduction. That word is not correct. We're not here to reproduce ourselves. We're here to open up doors and avenues for the incarnating, incoming souls, or those who don't believe in soul, at least energies, the energies of being. Let's remember that a baby, whatever is small in a baby, is only the physical body. All the rest is, is huge. So. I remember, Susanna, when my husband and I were preparing to conceive and, and getting ready and offering, surrendering, the life took a, a tone of something solemn. I mean, a salad, a walk, a talk, reading a book, resolving a problem. Everything was kind of almost as if we were not in an exam, but it's as if we were being observed because we had put out an offer to the universe. I often joke that we use the uh, galactic um, internet. Like it says, here's who I am. 
here's who your possible father is. This is how we live. This is how our home is. This, these are our ideals and ideas about life. Is there somebody who wants to come and come through us here in this physical reality? Because physical reality is tough. At least on planet Earth, matter resists. How many of us have great ideas that we bring into com completion, into fruition in, in a difficult way? And sometimes mm -hmm. they just remain ideas. Mm -hmm. I believe in other levels of reality, an idea becomes a reality right mm -hmm. there in front of you. So I remember we prepared a, a tape for the birth of our, uh, of our baby. We did not know if it was a boy or a girl. But we had recorded sublime choir music, very soft and slow, just for that little person arriving here to know that this planet can be tough, but it has been visited by great souls, like great musicians, like a Beethoven, a Brahms, a Mozart. We, we, we selected beautiful pieces. And that birth and labor reminds me that we're here talking about conception. Both are linked. The amount of surrender and delight I bring to a conception will help me later on, of course, not just for birth, but also breastfeeding, and some tough moments of toddlerhood when you're exhausted, but something in you remember how this child was conceived, and you gather more energy. So, yes, the physical realm, but also ideas. Let's suppose I love um, thrillers, and I love mystery books. I might make a a real choice. Let's get the best ones, the more elevated ones. Um, I love nature. Okay, let me dive into either films or, or books that enhance the beauty of nature, the intelligence of life all around us. But I can be a lover of history. Let me take gorgeous moments as if, as if I could choose um, not to become somebody else, no, but to become who I am at my best. Mm -hmm. And I remember having a, a walk, already seven months pregnant, and I was not happy with myself. Said, oh my goodness, all this best before conception and now with this pregnancy, I feel I am at 10%. And as I was walking by the Potomac River in Washington, D.C., I said, well, I'm striving. You know, this it's a perfect mm -hmm. word. I'm making my efforts and being me with a huge privileged situation, expecting a child, and um, filled with happiness, wishing I were a little bit more of myself. But okay, I, I can only give who I am, right? Yeah, and this is a, a very important message for mothers because when mothers think, um, when, I, when I work with mothers, they often tell me, Susanna, I didn't know that I had such an influence on my baby's uh, mental health, that it was so important for me to be well so that my all the resources from me are going to the optimal development, physical, emotional, spiritual development of my baby. And what can I do? Because now I'm on my seventh month or my eight, on my eighth month. And I always say you have to look inside, you have to accept who you are, be, you know, be in peace with yourself, with, with, with your best qualities, but also with the things that you think you need to transform, to evolve in yourself. And if you have challenges, know that when you overcome them, you're also teaching your baby that these challenges can be overcome. Yeah, but let me interrupt you because this yeah. is crucial. As I am overcoming a frustration or a problem or an anguish, mm -hmm. the physiology of overcoming it is being taught to the baby. Yes. I mean, when I say taught, those are messages the baby mm -hmm. receives and his or her neurophysiology adapts to it because I'm informing constantly during pregnancy how life is here outside. So baby is preparing since the first cell the baby is being prepared to be born, to breathe, to be with us, to laugh, 
to to crawl to walk one day all these are set in motion like the baby's preparing to breathe and inside there is no air how does a baby prepare for breathing well ask nature it's one of the secrets the mystery this baby will be perfectly equipped to have his or her own uh, blood circulation the heartbeat will be different the hormonal system will be different and the child will be able to breathe on his own on her own yeah. this is extraordinary so it doesn't stop there we are conceived and we grow in the womb to become an adult let's all remember that birth is just one episode we have an adulthood of 60 years to prepare at least to prepare mm -hmm. for this baby so because conception is so huge and pregnancy will be such a moment of power it's good to clarify and simplify our daily life i know that modern women plan things hmm, as to work till the very last minute and then go and deliver a baby well some of them miss the best of their pregnancy which means having some time um, to do just nothing just being because this nothing is huge. That woman is making a kidney, is um, building a liver and an eye and a skull. Yeah, so, and th those moments are moments of peace. That even in a chaotic day, we can pass to our baby that sensation of peace and calmness. And that peace and calmness is still possible in our daily lives. And, and women should feel, when they are pregnant, they should feel inspired. I like you so much when you talk about how women should be inspired while they are, you know, developing their babies. Do you want to talk about that? How important that is? Yes, I, I would love society to, to contribute more. Yes. You know, that inner joy and that inner inspiration, this is a good idea to have it at hand before conception. We have a tendency of saying, I'm so happy because so-and-so is arriving today. Great. But if you ask a spiritual master, this is not a real happiness. This is a simple happiness, but a real happiness is the one that has no reason, that comes from inside as a source, as a spring. And um, we're supposed to, to have at hand such joy, joy of being. Believe me, those who work on that before conception, they will have great resources when they're bringing up their, their children because there's so little time to gather things from the outside. So, you know, they say, be the change you want to see in the world, in the, the famous sentence of Gandhi. Um, be the nurturer to yourself and get your inner inspiration. Um, that is possible when the person has a way to relate to the universe and and feel inspired yes by the beauty of life and sometimes life brings you difficult moments atrocities but inside the response has to be still that kind of trust that kind of faith i admire those who know who to keep how to keep hoping hope is the Difficult virtue is um, when I say difficult is a, is a fascinating. Um, it's a fascinating moment. Um, it's a certainty of a possible future that will be grand, that will be beautiful. And um, pregnant women often are hopeful. I know we are used to see them with anguish. You have uh, friends and students at your yoga classes when they are pregnant. You must have seen that hope that comes like, oh, universe, let's have this child gorgeous. Yeah. And it's amazing how women really, even if they, they have lives that are stressful or jobs that are stressful or family lives that are uh, more demanding, when they encounter themselves in a moment of observating of a knowledge of awareness that they are always striving to 
be on that space. They want to come to classes. Some of them tell me, I wish my day was just like the yoga class. Yeah. Because if, you have, if you have many pregnant women there, I mean, 10, I don't know how many. Yeah. Oh, the synergy between yeah. the bellies. It's, it seems that the babies are happy. Yeah. And uh, I'm always very moved. One of my dreams is to have all over the world choirs. I mean, every in every neighborhood, choirs of pregnant women that mm. renew th themselves. Mm. Because uh, it's, a, it's a moment where you have the joy of being together, plus the joy of singing, and also the oxytocin that comes when the two hemispheres work together. Like one mm. is more specialized in the lyrics, the other one in the melody. And when the two work together, there's an extra oxytocin that comes and helps everything that is healing or growing in that body. Um, but which is our part of responsibility? Because, Susanna, I see women, and sometimes a very couple, so receptive, so open during pregnancy. And what society has to offer is often so poor. My, my understanding is that once governments finally understand the importance of a woman who's carrying our future in her in her womb then they will have laws and, and places and situations that will enhance the um the daily life of pregnant women i'm talking about for the very rich as far as the very poor mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. in between we uh, we have understood that the, that Pregnancy is not a disease. Great. But this is not a reason to treat a pregnant woman, especially sometimes when the bosses are women. They seem to be even tougher than when the, the bosses are men. They demand, because the woman is planning some maternity leave, they demand so much. I should we have, we should even choose to go to work or not, having the certainty of our salary um not because society is beautiful and generous because society is smart i am if i if i look at the um, the health um, health healthcare system there will be much less allergies autoimmune diseases we're talking about physical health and mental health yeah look and at, everything that we are talking about for for some of you that are listening to us is in the field of prenatal psychology, is in the field of epigenetics, of neurobiology. It's not something that it's, you know, just, we are just making up. No, th there are studies, there are knowledge of the last decades about everything that we are talking about. And you can you can see that on our, on our webpage, if you go there, there are knowledge, there are even experts on, on this field that have endured studies around this. And what happens when, women had a stressful situation and then babies are born and what happened for for instance in in cases of war and what happens when when that doesn't when that doesn't happen what happens when the when the needs of the mother are met and the mother is is living in a calm and peaceful environment how are the babies how are the babies that how is the baby development in the early years and and in opposition to others where that didn't happen. So everything that we're talking about, it has studies to support it, right? Yes. Um, when I started in the 70s, we had evidence from the field of transpersonal psychology, all the rebirthing, many therapies, but epigenetics had not been found yet. So there I was, and there was the beginning of PANA, which is the previous name of APA, the Association for Prenatal and Perinatal Psychology and Health. So there we were um, striving to, to disseminate that information with a lot of resistance from the medical um, corporation and also from the press. But then in 2007, when I organized a conference, when everybody knew about epigenetics, there was still lots of resistance. So it's important to look back. How generous are we going to be to wish for um, pregnancy, uh, pregnancies, harmonious ones, even if we were not gestated, uh, cared in the womb, 
of a harmon in a harmonious situation because most pregnancies are not harmonious. I know that we will have an, um, one of our interviews with Carla Machado will be about psychohistory, lots of revelations there. Mm -hmm. and um, But still, we will see from, uh, from books and research that are so, so brilliant, so gorgeous now with the field of epigenetics. And for those who are not familiar with this term, yes, of course, we do have genetic programming when we are in the womb. But how this genetic programming is going to develop itself will depend on informations that the cells, the membranes of the cells, will communicate to the nucleus saying, whoops, that gene, perhaps we don't need to activate it. Or oh, this one, yes. So there's a whole dance, a whole dance about our genes who will be either silenced or modified or even enhanced and call upon action. So many diseases might never manifest in a lifetime. You have them in the family, they are genetic, but they are not going to be there because the, the pregnancy was harmonious. And let's talk a little bit about stress. When we condemn stress, we're not condemning the daily stress, the healthy stress, mm -hmm. even the stress of a singer who's going to go on stage or an actor. Yeah, it's a good stress. Yes, and, and you're all moved and you have moments. We're, toxic, we're talking about toxic stress. Yeah. And there we're talking about violence and fear. We're talking about anguish that doesn't let you live normally. Please look for help if you are under these kinds of stress because the information given to the baby in development is an information that says, don't grow, don't be prepared for, for, for pleasure, for joy. Don't, um, don't develop your best abilities intellectually right now in your neurophysiology, because in this world you'll have to face violence. And um, even a whole pregnancy till, I don't know, eight months, under that kind of regime can be turned around mm -hmm. towards the very ending. And pregnancy, that's, ex that's, sorry, Laurie, to interrupt, but pregnancy is such a wonderful opportunity. Women need to realize this because it's an opportunity not only for the development of the baby and everything that we're talking about, but for the development of the mother. We are yeah. moving through uh, a path from women to mothers. And this, uh, in the, in the, even in the early stages of pregnancy, I felt it in all my pregnancies and with a lot of women that I work with, is that suddenly they see themselves in the mirror because the early stages of the pregnancy just asks you to stop, to calm down. You, you, maybe you're sick, maybe you're not feeling so well, you're more tired. Everything is telling you to stop. And it's when you go against this that troubles start coming, right? And then there's there's also not only the physical thing, but there's a lot of guilting around here because society is not prepared for this, for this stopping of the mother. And this should be a moment that we should so much respect what is going on with the woman, right? And that's yeah. what we are aiming for also in our organization. It's to wake up consciousness so that people understand that the more we respect that mother, that baby, we, we are giving big steps for a better society to come yeah. ahead. And the fathers, they often ask, well, what can I do? Yeah. Well, if they knew these men, how important the way they look at their wives their companions the quality of their look and trust and admiration is so important for the mind of this pregnant woman sometimes there are only two the whole world is against them it's okay there are two it's already almost enough and let's talk about genetic morphogenetic fields the baby in development has 50 percent of his or her material that is the father's so there is an energetic communion, communication that can perfectly take place uh, between the two. They don't even need to be 
uh, next to each other. So there's a huge, um, a huge amount of discoveries that fathers can also do. And it's also important to say that as I am pregnant, both my companion and myself will be reliving subconsciously the stages of pregnancy that they went through exactly corresponding to what this little one is going through now. If everything was fine, great. But if it was a difficult pregnancy for the man or for the woman, what a glorious time. To relax and say, no, this is now another story that is starting. And nurture that new story and be present to it. And by doing so, the little one they once were receives that well-being and that harmony. I'm talking about a universe that is, pertains to quantum physics, where past and present are one. It's as if, Susanna, all the lores that ever were, from embryo to newborn, were just here speaking with you. And um, we, as we nurture a pregnancy, whether we are the mother or the father of that baby, this, this nurturance benefits the woman, yes, and the man also, but benefits the one they were before. Um, it might take some questions, it might take much longer time, but think of that. Nothing is set in stone. Those memories, they, they pulsate in us and they have a reason to be. We can transform them. And throughout the childhood of this baby, the same thing is possible. So know your story. Know where you come from. What kind of union your parents lived. And try to know a lot about the story, even if your parents are not alive anymore or if they're reluctant to talk. Go and do the detective work because pregnancy and parenthood will bring you ways to be more in touch with your own energy and you will witness the gorgeous unfoldment of the growth of another being. That's mm -hmm. a privilege. Yeah. Thank you so much, Laura. We had such a nice talk, such a nice conversation. I always feel that we can stay here for hours. But we promise that this, um, this live series, we're going to be on short videos so that everybody can have access to the information, even if they have just a little amount of time to be with us. Yes. So thank well, you so much for, for having us here, for joining together our efforts here in our organization. And uh, I hope we can have another talk where we're just going to talk about Pregnancy Matters, our, our book. Yes, that you can. So, anyone can download from our from our webpage. It's free. We have educational resources there. Please feel free to go there at prenatalalliance.org. One more time, thank, thank you so you. much, Laura. Thank you, Susanna, and I wish you all on the path of consciousness, gorgeous parenting experiences. All the best and much light. <laughs>